Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. This week, we offer a few suggestions on improving the privacy around a new wood deck. You think about it, if you got a nice deck or a patio and the neighbor's driveway's right beside you, it's not the ideal situation. There's several different ways to improve that situation. Yeah, and that, that's a very common problem, right, Danny, is houses are building with zero lot lines. Yeah. Your, your neighbors are relatively close, and you right. know, yeah. watching you outside on your deck all day. Um, we're also going to help a homeowner who has a problem with his, his air conditioning condensate line. So we're going to sh- share a couple of tips on a proper way to maintain that line and keep it running clear. Hey, if you do have a deck or a patio, you know it's great to be able to watch your favorite show or maybe a ball game and gather everybody around. And uh, have you priced in the cost of an outdoor television, one that's rated for outdoor use? It's uh, four times more than a traditional television. Well, we have a great suggestion on a very do-it-yourself friendly TV cabinet that is waterproof that you can build outside. We have a video of it online at todayshomeowner.com, but we tell you all all about the details during this podcast. And I'm going to share a simple solution on how to use pool noodles to keep cargo from scratching up your car paint. You know, when you go to the home center, Danny, and you're going to carry something home on the top of your car, I mean, how do you do that? Well, I've got a simple solution with using pool noodles. The pool noodle industry just loves you, Joe, because you come yeah, up with so do. many different yeah. things there, and, and uh, we got a lot of I'm hoping of to win the Golden Pool Noodle Award oh, by wow, man. promoting the, best... the most sales, the oh, highest sales. Of that would be a proud day for you there. You could, yes, it you would. You could be. maybe frame your photo <laughs> along with the pool noodle. Yeah. yeah. Just don't go swimming with a brass pool noodle. Yeah, that's, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> hey, a lot of things for you here so let's get started we're gonna go right to rhode island right now valerie's on the phone with us good morning good thank you for having me uh, our Hello. pleasure um tell us about the deck here i understand uh, thank you for sending the the photo that you sent and um i know it sounds like you've been pondering a few ideas to uh, kind of make it a little more private out there Right. It's a 10 by 12 deck, about 12 to 14 inches up the ground, and it's about four feet from the neighboring driveway. So uh, I think it would be nice to have a little privacy for them and for me. And I've been trying to figure out how to do this. And I figured you'd probably have some good ideas. Well, it is a common problem or a common um, request that a lot of uh, homeowners have. Um, actu- right. Actually, um uh, my daughter Chelsea on her web show, checking in with Chelsea, did a very similar thing here. Where it was kind of kind of neat, where she actually built a couple lattice panels, and then actually attached little pots on the panels, and then plants grew out of that. So it was something very easy, almost mobile. Um, you know, to where you can, you know, where it's not a lot of heavy construction, but her and another young lady built this thing. And I'll tell you what, it must have created a lot of interest. There's been over 1.1 million people have viewed this video and the wow. how to part of that. So you might, that that's, we'll give you some other options, but that's one thing you can go to okay. check, checking in with Chelsea.com and then uh-huh. look, look for lattice privacy fence and you'll see the uh, the the show. She did an episode on it. She did a blog article on it, and 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 lots of follow up from people inquiring about that. So that's one option. But the, the the other one I would think about here is a careful choice of plants or small trees that you could plant along that area. Now the four foot area that you have between your deck and the driveway, are you able to plant things there? Yes, I, I can plant something there. I do have to be careful because there is a sprinkler system that that goes through there, but uh-huh, I know uh-huh. I know where that sprinkler is 
Located, so I believe there is some room for our plants. Uh huh. But but the careful choice of those plants is going to be so critical because you certainly don't want to you know and people do this all the time. You plant this beautiful little um, tree, small tree, and you didn't read the and fine, then it grows. Yeah, it grows, and you don't read the fine print that it'll be thirty feet tall right. in a few years. So you know some of the um, right. the vertical growth type of uh, evergreens and th- those type of things work really well in there that grow in you know kind of a cylindrical type of um. Uh, of direction and shape uh, would be a consideration, but also the, the going back to the lattice, um, and, and I'm not one that likes traditional lattice. It's just so overused. What I like is the checkerboard lattice, and you can get checkerboard in a privacy type of shape, and all that means is that the, um, the the spaces, the squares, are smaller than the traditional checkerboard. And of course, that's a, a great instant way of providing that um, that that privacy. But then it's perfect for those, the Carolina jasmine and some of these other um, vines that you can, um, you know, plant there and that'll, that'll grow right up. Joe, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? There's a, uh, really several different ways to go. Yeah, Valerie, it looks um, like... Well, it, I, I'm liking the idea of um, looking at uh, Chelsea's um, um, idea where she put some pots on a lattice. So I'm definitely going to look at that. And uh, whatever's easy and good-looking, I think that's probably what I'll do. Valerie, um, the other suggestion I had, which is similar to that, would be to build a rectangle or buy a rectangular planter box. And then just uh-huh. attach a, a trellis to it, you know, a frame with, to a, that. with a lattice. And if you put it on casters, then you can move it around if you need to. And even if you plant something that dies back in the summer, in the winter, you know, maybe it's full in the summer, it dies back. You're still going to have the, the the trellis part of this planter box right. you know, blocking view. Yeah, that's a great idea, You can build two too. or three of them, make them only, you know, big enough to accept a ready-made plastic liner and you build two or three of them line them up and move them around as you need to and this way you don't have anything permanently attached to the deck or plant that outside that you then have to deal with well, it sounds easier. Um, one, one other, it just, is pretty easy. Yeah. J- just a thought, you know, since you are talking about vinyl, you know, the having vinyl right uh, adjacent to it, you can buy good quality vinyl lattice that actually uh-huh. has the framework around it. If you want to, you know, have something that really matches in like that to do the same thing, that you can create those lattice panels or trellis panels, and then do you they ha- at- do they attach easy easily? Uh, yes, uh-huh. uh, they're actually have some channel um, framework that's made of vinyl that you're able to tie them all together. There's also um, PVC, cellular PVC materials that you can use for the framework. And uh, it's fairly easy. And then, of course, you know, you're able to put them right down into the ground uh, and then plant in front of them or use one of the rectangular boxes that Joe mentioned. So um, several different ways without spending a lot of money or requiring, you know, a lot of construction that will uh, get you that instant privacy that you need. Great ideas. I thank you so much. I'm right. looking forward to watching Chelsea. Oh, well, good, good. Yeah, just head over, check, uh, check in with Chelsea.com. Uh, it has been uh-huh. extremely popular, and you'll see why, because it's so simple and it, uh, so easy for you to do that to solve the problem. Great. All righty. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate for, the help. For, thanks so much for being with us, Our and I uh, hope you have a great weekend. You too. Okay, Thank you, you take very care. much. All righty. Bye-bye. Hey, it's time for our Best New Product segment brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Anyone who works with their hands knows the importance of a good pair of gloves. Get the comfort you need along with the protection for any heavy-duty job with Husky's water-resistant leather work gloves. These premium grain cowhide leather gloves allows your hands to stay dry and completely comfortable. The elastic band will make sure that they stay in place while the key Keystone thumbs provide additional wear and tear where you need it the most. For more information on the Husky water-resistant work glove, you can log on to Home Depot. Dot com. I, you know, every keystone the, thumbs. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit more. Do we um, know what that is? Well, it's just a, something a little thicker there that um, uh. you know, because so many times they'll they'll wear out right in the thumbs. And you know what? That's that's really a good gift. That's one of those things that you won't you don't think about buying someone. You know, just a small little feel good little gift. And uh, to buy a few of those, uh, be a great great way to go. You can find that at 
the Home Depot. Certainly hope everything's going well around your house. Are you tackling a little project? Are you doing a little maintenance? Or are you taking it easy this weekend? Either way, I hope things are going well for you. And if you need anything, you know what to do. Go to todayshomeowner.com and you'll probably get the answers to most of your questions. If not, pick up the phone. 1-800-946-4420 is the Today's Homeowner Hotline. Right now, we're going to talk to Katrina and... uh, Katrina is in Florida, and uh, Katrina, welcome to the show. Tell us about this uh, project that you just uh, convinced your husband to do. (laughs) Hi, thank you. Well, thank you guys for the video that you put together. It wouldn't have happened without that. That's the best one I found in researching. Good. So, yeah, we wanted to put a TV outside, and your outdoor TV mount that you put together looked uh, the best option. So I downloaded that video. I took it to Home Depot with my husband after two or three months of trying to convince him that it would be okay. He had concerns about the doors not closing properly in the first place. And sure enough, that ended up what we got a little snag with. We are having a question about the hinges. I will caution you, we didn't build it exactly like yours because Mm -hmm. the depth from the TV mount to the full end of the TV itself is six inches, and you guys use two by sixes. We looked at using two by eights, but they were just too big and heavy. Right. We thought for yeah. the fence. Mm-hmm. So we ended up wanting to put the doors on the outside. Yours look like they're just set in a little bit. Okay. All right. Under under the top two by six, if you will, for yours. Gotcha. But the hinges themselves. So I don't know if we just need a different type of hinge now. But in your video, we've you know scrutinized it. And it appears that there's an extra piece of plywood or something that you guys have put on the side that weren't mentioned in the video, maybe? Is that possible? Uh, that's possible. And probably it was nothing more than just a, a piece of the fence board in order to um, to seal that up, um, yes. and, you know, just to, just for, for the look of it and so forth. Um, now, you want to make sure now that, uh, I mean, you do have to protect this strongly against any moisture getting in, in there because I assume the TV you're using is the same type of television that we use that's really not rated for outdoor use. Correct. Okay. And and that's worth talking about because, uh, you know, people, um, you know, when they think about an outdoor t- television, first thing they do is they price those outdoor televisions. Did you happen to see how much those things are? I did. They were wow. 800 to 1000 and I got this. <sighs> I know. For 200. I know. I was going to say you could buy four of these by the time that you do that. And, and uh, but I mean, we, we always have to say, you know, that's not designed for outdoors, but we, 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 we do this quite a bit, but I think maybe did you, did you see how we use the weather stripping around it? I did. And I'm glad you brought that up because Home Depot did not sell. Is it okay if I talk about specific stores? Yeah, certainly. On the show? Of course. Okay. No problem. Home Depot does not sell a small roll of the uh, pre-roofing material. Oh, yeah. They only come in big, long rolls. And so would Gorilla weatherproof strips be okay, weatherproof tape? Uh, yes. Now, you're talking about up on top. You're talking about the top Correct. part of it. Yeah. Um, they should sell that. It, it's it's nine inches wide, and it's used. It's a membrane that's used for flashing around chimneys and, and different things like that. I know that they have roll roofing that comes in uh, 32-foot rolls and so forth, but you should be able to get the, the membrane flashing that's a peel and stick. But the, okay, they did have that, yeah. the flashing tape. Yes, uh-huh. You can, you can, and, and it's usually nine inches wide and, you know, maybe 25 or 30 feet long. But uh, that works well. But still, if you overlap the Gorilla Tape properly and you do that, that will work just as well to keep that um, off the top of it. But the weather stripping I'm speaking of is actually around the perimeter of where the doors close together, that when you close that door, just like an exterior door, it's squeezing against that weather stripping. Ah, okay. So like the foamy, rubbery type, exactly. different from exactly. the top part. It, exactly, yeah. We need yeah. to stick some of that in the side. Then. Right, just a peel and stick, and you probably, you know, it comes in a lot of different sizes, but probably something that's maybe half inch wide, half inch thick, and then you're glue, you, you, you can just peel and stick that all the way around the perimeter where when that door closes, it's squeezing up against it, just like a refrigerator door, an exterior door with foam stripping, anything along those lines, so that you're creating that waterproof um, area inside where the television is. Perfect. I see that now in the close-up that I took from a still from your video, so that explains what that is. Good. So the only other question I have then is how to get these hinges because the doors aren't closing quite right because we've right now got the exact same hinge that you have in the video, but we tried to attach it to the actual 2 by 6 And because our doors are flush-mounted on the front instead of set inside like yours are, 
do we need to add an additional piece of wood on the side? And it appears that you have that as well. You, you could certainly do that just as an extra precaution and uh, to be able to to um, seal that off even more. But yeah, I mean, you're on the right track. And also behind any of these pieces of wood you have to use the um, gorilla waterproofing tape that would be hidden yeah. behind it. Not a bad yeah. idea either to seal okay. any of that up. Also inside, you may notice we stained it. Well, one of the things, you know, staining it, we also caulked around every crack that we could get to on the inside before mounting the television just for that extra precaution again to keep any moisture out. Oh, this is funny because my husband and I had a debate about that at the store and I really wanted to get that and do that. And he said, no, the, the wood glue would be just enough protection and I disagreed. So could you talk me what kind of there were so many at Home sure, Depot, sure. I was overwhelmed. Yeah, I would, uh, and, and it is very overwhelming in that caulking aisle, but I would use a 100% acrylic latex, and they have it in several different colors, so you might look at a color that, you know, would be other than white that you can use depending on whether you're going to stain it or not um, inside. Not necessary to stain it, but you still can use a colored caulk to seal up every gap you possibly can find just so that water never drips inside. Great. Okay, and last question. Uh, yeah, I do think I found that, but there was a construction grade one, but it mentioned something about adhesive. I don't want that. No, right? I, was, no, that's okay. that's a construction adhesive that we use a lot to assemble things, but um, yeah. that, that that won't be necessary. That can be a little messy, a lot more messy than the acrylic it latex. Like so. it. Wow, okay. you you are well underway with that, and I'm glad we were able to to help you tweak it a little bit. You, are, you guys are going to have a lot of fun with that outdoor television. Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your help, and thanks for the ideas. Okay, absolutely. If we can help you in the future, let us know. Thanks so much, and uh, have a great oh, weekend. Yeah. And last tip, I am a Tennessee Volunteer fan, and even though I'm living in Florida, I loved it that y'all had the Alabama-Auburn game in for that video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. We, we had to sneak that in, of course. Yeah. Well, <laughs> All thank right. you so much. Okay, our pleasure, Katrina. Thank you very much. Now, that just makes me feel so good that we're able to provide information and have an enthusiastic homeowner that embraces is it. We're here to help you if you need anything at all. A lot of people out there might be using their air conditioning system during this time of the year. Some are are really relying on it, but uh, it is uh, one of those mysterious systems in your home that you really have to maintain and keep going, And uh, or it can really cause you some problems. Kevin down in Florida is with us right now to explain one of those problems that can happen from time to time. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Appreciate being on. Hey, our, sure. pl- our pleasure. Tell us, tell us about this, because uh, we get a lot of calls and a lot of people um, confused about like condensation lines, why they work, what they do, and that kind of thing. Tell us about your situation that you had here recently. Yes, well, as a lot of my neighbors uh, experience uh, at times, um, we'll notice that our AC is not coming on, and then if you walk over, you'll notice that your, uh, your thermostat is blank. And so to me, right away, that means that I didn't do my job and do any preventive maintenance like I should be, and that means my drain's clogged. And so uh, I, you know, set out to unclog it like I normally do, and unfortunately, I could not do it. So I had to call a a service tech out to unclog it, and uh, he came out, did his thing, uh, and, you know, got it up and running. Uh, One of the things I noticed was that he told me that when my thermostat went blank, it went back to reset, and it wouldn't come on. So they had to do some things to fix that because I did not have a battery backup. But the other thing that I noticed just yesterday um, when I was doing my preventive maintenance was that he apparently had drilled a hole into the cap that covers the access port for the drain where I poured down the liquid. And I've never seen that before, and I was wondering if that's a normal thing for there to be a hole drilled in that. That's interesting, Kevin. I don't know if it's a normal thing. And the only reason that I can think of that the technician might have done that was to prevent an air trap in the line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because okay. if you get if there's if there's a vacuum, of course, it won't drain properly. Right. Um, so I wouldn't cover it up without calling him first and just asking him, you know, I noticed you drilled a hole in the cap. Like, why is that? And I suspect that's probably why he'll tell you what he what he'll tell you is that he just was trying to prevent that air trap. Now, when you go to service this line, 
you do have access to it by removing this cap or by opening some kind of little door or something. What do you? You're not cutting into the line every time you need to access it, right? Oh, absolutely not. They've they put this uh, this cap in this PVC cap in there, so easy right. access. It's right inside the cabinet, uh, which is located in my laundry room. I, I live on in Florida, obviously. I'm on a slab, so where there's no right. basement or anything. But um, yeah, it's an easy access into there. And uh, normally, you know, and a little little confused. Not say confused, but I've had conflicting information. I've heard people say to pour bleach down there, and I've heard other people say pour vinegar down there. So I've hmm. alternated between both of them, but I'm wondering if you guys could tell me what is your recommendation? What's the best thing to pour down there to keep that sludge from accumulating? Yeah, we typically recommend bleach, and they do actually make a condensate tablet. I don't know what it does, but it's specifically made for that. You drop it down in there and you pour in some water, I think. So, uh, But we typically recommend bleach, and you just have to do it regularly. And the reason I asked about whether it's accessible or not is because I think it was in 2016 or 17, I think 17, there was a code that required access to be made into those systems because you used to have to cut them and then glue them back together. So I'm glad you have access. And in fact, for anyone else who's listening, if you go to a, there's a website that I, I go to all the time to check on these products. It's called allaccessdevice.com. And it's just this really affordable little device you cut into your line and has a little door and a, some of them have a little float valve to prevent it from backing up. But anyway, um, if you don't have access, as Kevin here does, you know, check out this this website and see what products they. And I they and have I suspect, um, as Joe said, is just preventing an air trap in there and make it easier to get into. And yeah, a cup of bleach uh, about every two months is all you really need to do. But another little trick, and you might check out this really cool video on our website todayshomeowner.com, and mm -hmm. and then put in the search engine there um, in our um, site um, cleaning an AC condenser line, and it's actually where um, Joe puts a shop vac. Um, outside uh, where, where it you know drips out into your yard or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, duct tapes it a little bit, you turn that shop back on for about 10 seconds and anything in that line anywhere is coming out and coming out quick. So that's a way that you can ensure there's nothing building up in there now and that way as you're adding the bleach to it, you can be sure that it'll take care of it. Awesome. Now, when when you do that with the vacuum, do you recommend taking that cap off of yes. the access tube? Yeah, good yes. point. Good point. Uh, yeah, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't have to, but um, it just allows that full pull through of all of that. And uh, that 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 works really well. I've, I've, we've used it a lot of times, and it's amazing how quick. And that's what the AC guys do a lot of times. That's great, guys. I appreciate the information. Thanks so much. Okay. Our right, pleasure. Luck, you Kevin. take care. Stay cool, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's uh, one of those things, maintenance, maintenance, you have to do from time to time. But um, also um, that line that goes, for, and it's usually a three-quarter inch white PVC line going from wherever your air conditioning um, air handler unit is to the outside, whether you have it in the attic or a hallway or whatever, you need to make sure that thing is dripping all the time the AC is on. And also you need to make sure that there's, um, you know, things, you know, uh, insects can build a little nest in there or the spiders particularly sp spiders without a doubt of uh, grass can grow up and start blocking it and if that gets blocked it's really um, going to be a big problem inside because it'll back up if you have a float switch it'll make your air conditioning system not come on uh, so when that when that happens that gets pretty pretty serious Hey, let's try to see if we can help on a little bit of lighting issues here. Johnny's in uh, Louisiana. Johnny, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my call. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely interested. Uh, this is a interesting uh, question that you have, and a lot of people um, are, you know, have to have to make these decisions. So tell us about it. Well, uh, we, my wife and I recently purchased a home. Uh, it's about 30 years old, so it's very dated. We're trying to w increase the lights in our kitchen. It's very dark. It's got a long, uh, you know, uh, uh, fluorescent light in the center. And uh, we're trying to find out about uh, 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 recess lighting. So the question is, uh, how do we determine what size of uh, recess lightings you want to put in a room and, 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 and what's the best number ba based on the uh, actual square footage of the roof? Okay. Okay. And um, I assume you have access above of these rooms in your attic. 
Yes. Okay, good, good, good. That'll make it easy. Yeah. Um, you know, so many times people decide on um, the number of recessed lights based on just the symmetry of it all. If you got three down this side, you got to put three down that side, but also there's other options to put in some smaller uh, size recess that might spotlight a piece of artwork or a fireplace or something along those lines, or even more task lighting that might, you know, uh, shed that light directly down on a bar top or something like that. But LED D lights are the way to go. And Joe, in terms of just looking at that, in terms of making sure you have enough light, uh, it's really more than than the square footage aspect of it. Yeah, it is, Johnny. I, the rule that I remember is that it depends on how high you're, it's often based on how high your ceiling is. And so you measure okay. your ceiling and you divide it by two. So let's say you have a standard eight foot ceiling, so you divide it in two, and that gives you the spacing between the fixtures. Now, it doesn't always okay. help you with how many, but you know, if you have a 12 foot room, let's say, and you have eight foot ceiling, so the fixture should be four feet apart. Um, okay. And so you come four feet off a wall, you put a fixture. And so that would help you determine how many fixtures as well, because you're going to run out of space, right? You're going to divide up the space. And, and you know, if it doesn't divide equally by, f in this case, four, then, you know, you, you whatever's left over, you balance it. So maybe it's two feet off the wall and you put in a fixture, you, then you go every four feet and then the leftover space is also two feet you know so it's at least balanced um, okay so so that's that's the general rule and so you just take your ceiling height divide it in half and that's the spacing between fixtures now as far as the size of the fixtures the most popular sizes are five and six inch you can get compact ones which are four inch so you'd probably want five or six inch i suspect and as danny said the led is the way to go and they have okay. um led retrofits that fit into an existing or a brand new recessed oh. traditional can or you can buy canless check out canless led recess lights yeah yeah that's... they're only about an inch thick yeah. there is no can wow that's way to canless. go right there yeah wow so that's uh, so it doesn't have a can and that doesn't interfere nope. with anything like uh, any insulation or anything nope. in a... exactly wow yeah okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I didn't even know about those. I have to look into that. Yeah, yeah, they're relatively new and they're pretty affordable too. I bought, I bought six of them. I think they're nine dollars a piece. Okay, I'm, I'm about to buy a few. I think uh, fifty one of them I'm buying. So. <laughs> wow. He didn't need fifty two. He needed yeah, fifty one. Fifty one. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should have made your house bigger. You could have bought a nice even number. <laughs> well, Johnny, hopefully that'll help you and get you a sufficient light in there. The LED has a great, great light. It's going to save you some money along the way. And uh, uh, best of luck on it. Let us know if we can help you any other way. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. Our pleasure. Have a great weekend. You're welcome. Wow. We have been all over this great country talking to homeowners and hopefully um, pointed people in the right direction. And a lot of resources that are available out there. We'd certainly recommend you drop by today's homeowner.com anytime that you, you know, have a question or trying to get the right opinion. Uh, there's a lot of information there. Over 4,000 videos, including a great library of simple solutions. Today's homeowner.com slash simple solutions almost 500 videos there that uh, will just make you the hit at the next party you go to on solving solutions for uh, people all over that gathering and joe's got another simple solution for us right now okay danny have you ever gone to the home depot and you you get there and you start buying stuff and you realize as you're pushing your cart out to the parking lot how am i ever going to get this what was i thinking how am i ever going to get this home <laughs> never going to fit in my car so occasionally you have to strap something to the top of your car to the hood or the, the roof of your car and so here's a way to do that without scratching up the paint job and all you need are a couple of pool noodles you know we talk about pool noodles quite often here on simple solutions and you're going to get the kind with the hole through the middle and you're going to thread a couple of ropes through you know rope through each one and just tie it to let's say it's the roof of your car just tie it and you can bring it through the windows or open the doors and bring it through underneath and tie it and what you're doing you just want to hold the the pool noodles in place so that you can put whatever it is the lumber or whatever you bought that you thought was going to fit in the trunk um, on top of your car and that, that, it's as simple as that. Then you obviously strap that down and make your way home. Oh, there you go. And you'll be able to keep from um, affecting the, the paint and that kind of thing. Great. Yeah, pool noodles are uh, something that's very inexpensive and a lot of uses for them. Another great simple solution certainly reminds me of a trip I made a few years ago to Hawaii. And I thought, you know, I'm going to surprise my three girls with a convertible. So I rented right. this really decadent convertible. Uh, you know, convertibles don't have uh, much uh, cargo space, and when you have when you're traveling with three girls and a wife, you got a lot of cargo. 
and big <laughs> giant suitcases. So I got to, the, so I didn't even think about it. I go to the rental center. Here's this mountain of luggage, every bit as large as this little convertible. And I'm saying, okay, I got a problem here. So I actually had to hire someone to bring all of this luggage back. Oh, no. So when we turned around to go back to the airport a few days later, I was determined I was getting that stuff in or on that car right. because we were driving around the island to get back to the you know, all-day trip. Right. Well, there's no roof. Couldn't you just pile it up? Well, I went and bought a lot <laughs> of ropes, bungee cords, and um, a few uh, plastic uh, garbage bags. And I put right. everything in garbage bags. I, stack, I filled up the little bitty trunk. Okay, that's one one of six pieces of luggage, and then I piled the other on top of the back of that um, that thing, and I duct taped, I roped, I bungeed and everything, and then I drove up to the hotel, nice hotel, to pick up my daughters, and they were petrified. I'm not like Jed getting. Clampett. I, I'm not getting in that. I'm not getting in that car. So I had a hard time convincing them to get in there. <laughs> and of course, yeah, we had a few people pointing fingers, a few people taking pictures. I'm sure there's some pictures of this uh, <laughs> spectacle. But yes, we had fun, and I was determined. I am not hiring someone. I am duct taping this thing That's to the right. car. So anyway, uh, pretty I'm much. Sure your <laughs> daughters were thrilled when they, they came out to climb into the car. They were real thrilled about that. Thanks, Dad. Okay, now it's time for our podcast question of the week, and we'd love for you to send in a question by simply going to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Mark from Texas writes, I'm a big fan of your show. I love that it's on Amazon Prime now. Our situation is that we share a privacy fence with our neighbor in the backyard. They have a dog, and we have a dog, and they like to run beside the fence and bark at each other. That sounds like that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> of course, there are bare spots where our dog turns around, and when it's wet, our dog tracks mud into our house. What do you suggest to make it look a little nicer and reduce the mud getting tracked in? I'm sure there's a lot of homeowners that deal with this same problem. There certainly is, Mark, and uh, several different things there. I mean. Uh, if you're trying to prevent the dog from running back and forth, that's one issue. But if you've um, just resigned to the fact that they're going to do that, then you can plant shrubs there that will prevent the dog from running directly against the fence. But, Joe, what do you think that dog's going to do? Just move out a little bit? Yeah, maybe he'll run next. Well, if you put the shrubs up and they're thick enough and he doesn't see the other dog, he might not. Huh be running back i think it's the fact that they see the other ah, dog. that's a good idea yeah right so i suspect this fence is something you can easily see through so you could do that put the put the um shrubs there or you can put something that's not going to get worn out along the fence i don't know how long a mark how long this fence is mark has but you can put you know gravel or brick path even or bark mulch maybe and this way if the dog runs back and forth he's not killing the grass and and if you don't like the look of that, then you can plant shrubs sort of in front of that. So you'd mm -hmm. have the shrubs, then you have a little run, dog run, then you'd have the fence. Um, and the other thing is dogs do that because they're full of energy. And if you want to just, if you have the time to walk your dog all the time, burn off some of that energy, maybe, you know, he won't be running back and forth so often. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, and you know something else that looks pretty good I could think of. out in the yard like that is uh, the brown pea gravel. The little right. small yeah. gravel that's brown, you know, instead of having something that's limestone colored or anything else, it just kind of seems to blend in a little bit better there. So you're able to, um, you know, maybe even put a some type of retainage like a one by four treated on each side, bury it way down in the ground where you only have about an inch or so sticking up, and then just fill that trench with gravel. So it looks very purposeful to have it out there. Right. And then, of course, that makes it a lot neater when the dog is, um, you know, when it does rain and you have that mud issue like that. Hopefully that'll help you there, Mark, in being able to keep your yard looking good and also keep the mud out of the house. And again, we want to encourage you, if you have a question for us, just to send it to us at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. We really appreciate you spending some time with us uh, each week. Hope you're enjoying the daily feeds that we're doing with some of the tips for today's homeowner and a few of the other little extras that we'll be throwing in from time to time. And if you like it, go ahead and let everybody know about it by writing a favorable review. As I mention every week here on the podcast, that's the way the podcast uh, works is uh, the more people that um, brag about it and mention it, uh, it's certainly something that we appreciate you doing. And 
we can reach more people. So certainly uh, appreciate you being with us here. I'm Danny Lipford along with Joe Truini, and we'll see you very, very soon.